Hi, my name is Mark Miller. I'm the CEO of Quadrilla Resources. And we're standing today in front of a drill rig that's drilling a new exploration well to 9,000 feet near Blackpool. I thought we'd talk just a little bit today about what we're doing and explain a little bit about our company and our philosophy and maybe give everybody a better understanding about what we're all about. From time to time there's discussions about issues that arise out of drilling shale gas wells and we'd like to talk a little bit today about the things we do to ensure that we won't encounter any of those issues in our well sites. As part of our plan for making sure that we use industry best practices, we really have to start out first with a selection of the right equipment. In short, this is one of the best designed rigs available to the industry today. It's one that is, uh, in, employs all state-of-the-art equipment, even down to the, 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 the actual operation of it, up on the rig floor, all done through computers and sophisticated electronic equipment. It's a rig we can be proud of and it's a rig that really fits our goal of having a model operation on every well site that we work on. A lot of people when they're trying to envision how big is a well bore, they get these ideas that they're really huge diameter holes. In reality, this is the drill bit that actually is going to go down to 9,000 feet and penetrate the bowl and shale. This bit has special cutting heads on made out of tungsten carbide and it's about 35,000 pounds to, to replace one of these bits. We can use this bit, uh, if everything goes well, to drill about 2,000 feet a hole. Well, we've had a look at a site with a drill rig and a drilling operation in progress. Now let's go to a site and have a look at what happens when we actually set up to conduct a hydraulic fracturing treatment or a frack job. A lot of people have questions about what, what really is fracturing, what goes on in a frack job. The easiest way to think about what a frack job is and, and really why we do it uh, can best be demonstrated by maybe looking at this atlas and think of the space between these pages as fractures that are naturally existing in the formation. Now you can imagine if I'm pressing down in this with all the weight of the earth on top of it, it's not very easy to get gas through those, those particular fractures. But suppose we could go ahead and, and open these pages somehow and stick a coin in it and bring it to rest. Well, if you look at that again, you'll see that there's, while there's closure on this, there's actually little spaces around the edge of it. That's what we're really trying to do with a frack job, is we're trying to, to get down into the naturally occurring fractures in the earth and put something in there to hold them open, and that's sand. I have here a piece of actual bowl and shale taken from the Priest Hall well. You can see really tiny micro fractures in here that are naturally occurring in the rock. This was taken from this well that we're on, and it's at a depth of about 8,000 feet. Now what we're going to try to do in our frack job is to pump these open ever so slightly, probably not much more than the width that you see right here, and we're going to try to get sand in that. So how do we do that? Well, we have to transport the sand somehow, and we use water. I have some drinking water, and this is really a good example of what we use because we use water that comes straight out of the domestic water line and gets piped into our location before we frack and put into steel tanks. So we'll put some of this in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add the sand that is going to be delivered down to 8,000 feet and actually prop these fractures open. What I really want to do now is just show you how we get the propping down the well. So I have here some typical sand and I'm going to put some of this in our water. And that's about the right ratio that we would normally put into a frack job. We're going to stir this and we would pump that solution down a well. Now this solution here of fresh water and sand makes up 99.7% of everything that goes into this well. So the question you might have is what else goes into the well? This chemical here, which is a friction reducer, and it's an additive that we put in in a very small concentration, and I'm going to put in approximately the amount that would go into a, a typical frack treatment. There's five drops, and that additive goes in for one purpose. It's to lower the friction while we're pumping down the well to enable us to pump at a lower pressure. The other additive we put in is called a biocide, and it's really put in there for one purpose, and it's to ensure that we don't get bacteria growth. Now normally when we buy domestic water, we don't really need this, but it is a possible additive that would go in, and if it does, it would be the equivalent of one drop with this, about a drop and a half, and that's the, the primary chemicals that go into the frack treatment itself. There is one other additive that we may have to use in any frack treatment, and that is a real weak hydrochloric acid 
put in a very small volume right at the very beginning of the job, just enough to get us through the perforations. It's a, a product that's actually used in the food industry to purify beer. It's in, in, in the EU, it's uh, referred to as E507. We put it down there just enough to go ahead and get us through the perforations with our frac treatment and then we're done. So it doesn't actually get added to this fluid while we're pumping, but it may be sort of a spearhead out in front of it. This is our frac job made simple on a, on a countertop. So let's go now and look what it, the, the equipment looks like and see how you do this on a larger scale. Inside the, the control room, we looked at the simple version of how a frac job is done. But rather than having beakers and bottled water and stir sticks, on a larger scale, we need some sophisticated fracturing equipment. Let's we'll start first with these, these silos here. These actually contain the sand that's going to go down the well. To get that into the water, we pump it into that unit there that's, that's white. It's called our blending unit. And that blending unit has one purpose. It brings fresh water in, adds the sand, stirs it up into a slurry, and places the additives in the exact concentration to go down the well. But that's at low pressure. So it delivers a low pressure sand slurry mix to go down the well into the back of these high pressure pumps. And these things are all combined together and they pump this down the well at the pressure needed to fracture the formation and place the sand. And that really is the simple version of how we frack a well. After we frack the well and go ahead and, and, and flow back the fluids, then we have to go ahead and install this well head on top of the well. This is a 5,000 pound work pressure well head and it'll be bolted to the well and contain all the pressure and give us full well control after we leave the site. Quadrilla uses only the best industry practices and we use the latest technologies available to the industry to ensure that when we're done we have a leak proof well and we have no issues whatsoever regarding any potential environmental damage. We can assure people that some of the concerns that you have regarding oil and gas drilling will not happen on, on our watch and, and will not happen with wells we drill in this area. Thank you.